Hi, I'm Martin, this is S'mores, and we're going to deploy a Vue app to Google Cloud. You will see every step along the way, so you can do the same and deploy your app. Anyone on the internet will be able to use your app, and you won't have to manage any servers. Let's get started! The first step is to create a Vue app. Then I'll create a server-side app using Express and that will serve the Vue app to users and provide an API so the app can get data from the server. And finally, we will deploy the app to Google Cloud. Right, S'mores? Yes. All right, first off, uh, I need Node.js installed on my computer. I already do, but if you don't, go here to get it. Oh dear, you want to get down. Okay, I'll continue by myself. Next, I will run npm create view at latest to create a default view project. It will ask me for a project name. It will also ask me for a bunch of settings for the new project. Uh, I'll pick what I usually use here. It will run for a little bit and then will show me what to do next. Uh, I'll cd to the directory it created. I'll install the dependencies like it told me to. And run the app from my local machine. There is my view app. Great, the app is working. Right, s'mores? All right. Let's make a small change. Uh, I will open the source directory, then open app.view, and I will edit this line here. And save. Aha, we see that it was automatically reloaded in the browser. Excellent. We now have an environment for local development with hot reload when we update the code. Uh, let's build the app for distribution. I'll press Q to get back my command prompt. Then I'll run npm run build to build the app for deployment. Here we see that some files were created in the dist directory. Those are the files that will deploy to the cloud later on. All right, that was step number one. Now we're ready for step number two. We'll create a server-side Node.js app. It will do two things. One, it will send the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript uh, files from the dist directory to the user's browser so they can use the view app. And two, it will provide a server-side API that our view app can call. Any web app I've ever built has called an API to access the database or to run server-side code. To create that server-side app, I'll go up one directory from the view app. Then I'll create a new Node.js app. The server-side app will use the express package for handling HTTP requests, so let's install that. If you prefer another package, that's fine. Then I will create the file index.js. This server-side code will initialize Express so it can respond to incoming HTTP requests and handle JSON data. Then I will tell Express to serve files from the dist directory as static files and not try to run that code on the server. Uh, remember, that directory uh, has the HTML, JavaScript, and CSS files that our view app built. And then I'll add code to start the Express server so it listens to incoming HTTP requests. Let's add a server-side API that our view app can call to get a list of pirates. When the app hits this URL, this code will run on the server. First, it will extract the ID from the URL. Then it will look up the pirate that has that ID. If no pirate was found, it will return a 404 error to the view app. But if the pirate was found, that pirate's record will be returned in JSON format. 
Now in the finished app, uh, this getPirate function would probably look up pirates in a database. But just to get off the ground quickly, let's hard code some of my favorite pirates here. All right, the server-side code is done. Uh, let's run it on my machine. It's convenient to have an npm script for this. So I'll go to package.json for the server-side node.js app and enter this start command. We can use this ourselves. Uh, and once we deploy this app to the cloud, Google will actually look for the start command and run it on our behalf up on a server. I will also add type module here so that import statements work the way we expect them to. All right, let's run that start command. The server is running on this port on my local machine. Uh, let's go there with the browser. Very nice. Our server-side app sent us the built view app files. So I'm now running that app in my browser. Now let's take a look at that API. I will ask for a pirate number three here, slash API, slash pirates, slash three. And there it is in JSON format. The API is ready to be used by our view app. But let's move on to the last step. The third step was to deploy this app to Google Cloud. First, let's create a project in Google Cloud for our app. I'll go to console.cloud.google.com. Then I'll click through here. And here I can click this button to create a new project. If this is my first project on Google Cloud, I will also need to set up a billing. We will use Cloud Run, which is serverless, so it has no fixed monthly cost. It will only charge us when our app is actively creating a response to a user's HTTP request. What does that mean? Well, in this chart, our container is listening for incoming HTTP requests for the entirety of the dark gray bar at the top. The blue bars are requests. The green bars shows what we're getting billed for. As you can see, when no blue request is being processed, there's a gap in the green billing bars. We aren't charged for those gaps. In other words, if our app gets 1,000 requests per day, and each request takes one second to process, we will only be charged for 1,000 seconds of CPU time that day, not 24 hours of CPU time. We may even be charged less than that, actually, if some requests overlap, like the blue bars in the graph. The first 200,000 CPU seconds each month are free with Cloud Run. There's also a free tier for memory usage. You can find all the details about the free tier and the cost if you go above the free tier here on Cloud Run's pricing page. In practice, this free tier means that none of my development or testing projects have cost me anything. It's only when I got serious production level traffic that I've actually had to pay for Cloud Run. Having said that, uh, for the rest of the steps in this guide to work, uh, you need to create a billing account here. If this is your first Google Cloud project, you get a $300 credit. All right, now let's get ready to deploy the view and node apps to Cloud Run. Uh, that's done with the gcloud command line tool. And here are the installation instructions. I've installed that tool on my machine already, so I will first authenticate with gcloud auth login. This will give me access to my projects in Google Cloud. We see here that the gcloud tool tells us that we should set our current project. That's a good idea. Looks like we need our project's ID. We can find that here at the project homepage on console.cloud.google.com. Let's copy that. And then we'll use the gcloud tool to set our current project. All 
All right, let's deploy our app to Cloud Run. I'll enter gcloud run deploy and what I would like the Cloud Run service to be called. I can have multiple Cloud Run services in my project. The gcloud tool will ask me where the source code is. It's in the current directory, so I will hit enter. Then it says that some APIs will need to be enabled. Uh, to help with security, uh, Google requires us to turn on each API we want to use in our project. I will turn on those APIs in my project. Next, I get to decide where in the world this code will run. Any internet user will be able to access the app, but it will be slightly faster for users close to the location I pick here. U as a central one sounds good to me, so I'll enter 30. Now it asks me about unauthenticated invocations of my app. Do I want my application to be reachable by anonymous users on the public internet? I do, so I hit Y again. And now it's building and deploying my app. This will take a few minutes, so I'll uh, refill my cup of tea. And I'm back. The deployment succeeded, and here it shows me the URL that our app is served from. Let's open that in a browser. Look at that. There is our view app. It's now on the public internet, ready for anyone to use. Let's also make sure that the server-side API works. I'll enter slash API slash pirate slash one after the base URL. And there is the pirate record. Uh, both the client-side view app and the server-side API work from the cloud. We have created a view app, created a server-side Node.js app, and deployed them to Google Cloud for all the world to enjoy. Now, there are a few more things you'd need to make a good web app that's ready for actual customers. Your domain name, a database, and user authentication. Let's start with the domain name. The URL that Cloud Run generated for us is fine for development and testing, but we'd probably want to use our own domain name before we send real users to our app. Let's go back to console.cloud.google.com and our project. I'll click the hamburger menu and scroll down to serverless and Cloud Run. Here is our Cloud Run service and any others we may create in the future. If I click the service, I get this page where I can view metrics, set service level objectives, check the logs, and many other useful things. But we want integrations. I'll add an integration and pick custom domains. Here I'll enter my domain name that I bought previously. Enable some APIs. This will set up a load balancer that points to my Cloud Run service. It will also create a certificate so people can use HTTPS when accessing my domain. When the APIs have been enabled, I'll click this Submit button. After a few minutes, it will show me the DNS changes that I will need to make with my DNS hosting provider. I did all this for my domain, and this is what it looks like when it's done. By the way, uh, this load balancer will carry a fixed monthly cost of about $20. All right, that was the domain name. What about the database? Well, there are plenty of choices in Google Cloud. If you prefer relational databases, Cloud SQL is a popular choice. You can turn that on in your project like this, uh, but there are other SQL choices as well. If you like NoSQL uh, document databases, you may want to use Firestore instead. By the way, I love Firestore because it's completely serverless, so it has no fixed monthly cost, and it comes with a free tier. Also, it has a client-side API, so clients can access the database directly without any server-side code, if you wish to set it up that way. Finally, many web applications need to authenticate the users. Let's talk about that. It takes a lot of work to build login functionality yourself. And it's kind of dangerous too. Uh, you might leave a security hole open. I know I've done that in the past for some of my hobby applications. 
That's why I prefer using Firebase Authentication. It lets users log in with their existing accounts from Google, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, and others. Or users can create a new account specifically for your app with their email and a password they pick. Firebase Authentication takes care of all of that for you. So there you have it. The three steps to publish your view app to the world using Google Cloud. In my opinion, the best way to build an app is to focus on your users and what they need. Don't waste time on server maintenance, networking, scalability, and so on. Google knows how to run production web apps and can take care of that for you. That way, you can launch version 1.0 of your app sooner. And version 2.0 of your app will be able to serve thousands or millions of users because it runs on Google infrastructure. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please enter them in the comments. Also, let me know if there are any other serverless topics you'd like to hear about in future episodes. I read every single comment. And I can't wait to see what you build. Until next time!